Yeah? It's good? Okay, thanks. So hi everyone, I'm Christoph. So I'll try to be brief as I am the last one. And I guess everyone wants to jump in the tram to go to the feast. <laughs> so. Okay, so I'm presenting a tool that's called uh, Nadja Edit. So this tool is uh, current purpose is to be uh, optionally interleaved between Yosis and Open Road. So what does this tool do? It does a hierarchical gate netlist to hierarchical gate netlist transformation. And the important uh, item here is hierarchical. So currently, um, here what I will try to show is um, optimizations that we are doing. So kind of netlist cleaning. Uh, so mainly constant propagation and dead logic optimization. And one of the purpose of the tool is to keep exactly the same hierarchy uh, 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 from the input hierarchy. And also to keep netlist data at maximum. So we only modify uh, what is needed to be modified um, because of those optimizations. And one uh, item that is important for us is optimized uniquification. So we try to modify the netlist at the minimum. Uh, there's a Python user API that uh, I will try to, to show. And it can be interleaved. So this is just an example, but this could be used between um, other synthesis tool and also in, also in the FPGA context. <clears throat> so there was this presentation from Thomas earlier that uh, showed an example on the netlist. And there was this uh, huge different number in Yosis when um, you're applying flat synthesis or hierarchical synthesis. And so what, what is the reason for this? So Yosis, in fact, is when you are keeping hierarchy, is doing module per module synthesis. So everything that is cross module uh, optimization is basically uh, disabled. So here are two examples. So on, on the upper right here, uh, you have dead logic. So you have a gate that is going to nowhere. And on the left bottom, you have a constant that is in front of the hand. So what will happen in, in Yosis, it's basically, of course, the two gates will be removed, but optimization will stop at the boundaries. So it will not cross to the other modules. So this inverter and this inverter, so it's a very simple example, uh, will still be there. So the question is, why keep hierarchy? So it's true that today, um, in most open source uh, tools and flows, so basically there is a contradiction between keeping hierarchy and optimization. <clears throat> but I think uh, that um, at least if we are targeting bigger and bigger designs, this is a, uh, going to become a, quite an issue. Because keeping user hierarchy information in the flow as late as possible is something that is important. So basically for two reasons. The first one is um, to be able for the user to intervene very late in the flows. So if you destroy completely the user data, uh, at least late steps in the flow, user is completely lost, which can be bad, for instance, for guiding uh, placement or routing or putting constraints very late in the flow. But also it's very important for, for tools. Uh, user hierarchy is not always, but most, most of the time is uh, a very a grouping uh, information that can be very useful for placements. Uh, for instance, this is the, the main uh, uh, candidate here, but it is quite important for the downstream tools after synthesis. And also, if we maybe uh, in open source flows target something that is called uh, physical synthesis, meaning that we are able to um, recall synthesis, maybe also later in the flows, not, maybe not for the overall design, but for specific blocks, uh, then keeping hierarchy also uh, will be important. Um, so this is just an example also to illustrate this. Uh, this is coming from uh, ETH, so this is just two designs. And what you can see here is that after um, uh, PNR, they basically color uh, the different blocks in the module. And you see that uh, the modules are not completely, I mean, merge all over. And that there is still some kind of grouping information. 
So uh, what kind of what optimization we are currently doing? So basically three. Um, so the first one is dead logic elimination. So it's very simple. Again, the bigger thing, uh, the important uh, item here is that we are uh, again keeping the hierarchies, and so we are propagating this uh, all over the hierarchy. Also, if you have uh, a zero in front of an, we'll remove it. And also, if there is, let's say, a one in front of the end, we'll do a reduce. So we'll find if, if there are constants in front of, in front of a gate, um, we'll try to identify a candidate in the standard cell library to, to, to replace it. Um, so we are carrying uh, multiple experiments. The, the, the main one recently is to use, I don't know if uh, many people are aware of this uh, repo, it's um, le uh, associated to Open Road, it's called Open Road uh, Flow Scripts. So it's multiple uh, technologies and multiple designs that you can run uh, to um, experiment uh, with Open Road. Um, in this repo, uh, there, there are m many settings. Um, here, uh, I'm not modifying any, any settings. Some of the designs are using flat synthesis, but other designs are using hierarchical synthesis. So it's not keeping everything uh, in, uh, full user hierarchy. It's more like a two steps of flow where, so first step will run a first synthesis, then uh, there will be some kind of uh, identification of modules in terms of size, and then there will be uh, some modules that will be dissolved based on some size threshold. So it's, let's call it guided or automatic guided hierarchy. Um, Currently, the experiments are uh, done in a, a, a fork, and basically to enable NatGedit, it's some kind of an environment variable. So then uh, we can compare with and without. So just uh, some um, uh, some results. Maybe I, I I hope it's readable. So basically, what you can see is, depending on the size of the design, of course the kind of gain we are getting is getting higher. So the, the, the biggest one here is Black Parrot. It's 250 gates. And uh, after applying those optimizations, we are able to clean away 18% uh, uh, of the design. Of course, when the designs are small, even if they are hierarchical here, uh, I put only hierarchical designs, sometimes it's less than 1%. And the blue one here, I have to analyze more because it's the biggest design there, but we are not able to gain much. So maybe there are settings uh, I, I need to, yeah, I need to analyze more. Um, so, of course, the purpose of this is also to focus on the biggest design. So, um, the I, I try to collect the biggest designs uh, that I could that are open source design. So there's one that is coming from ETH Basilisk. The, the, um, the other one is Black Parrot, uh, that is in RFS, and there is also Megaboom that is uh, close to RFS, that is currently the, the biggest design that we have uh, under uh, access, which is close to four, 4 million gates. Okay, so some results again. So what, what, you, what you see here is basically the, this column here, which is quite interesting. So first of all, what, what is the difference between, without any optimization, if I compare flat synthesis to a hierarchical synthesis? So on the black parrot one, the default one, there is a 45% increase in, in number of gates. Uh, Basilisk, I have two versions. Uh, it's 27%, uh, yeah. So after Nadja edits, what, um, what we see is that we are gaining things, but still not able to fully recover. So until now, um, flat synthesis will always be uh, the, you, you will always get the smaller uh, size uh, design. So we are uh, still not recovering. But for this design, I haven't uh, got access to flat synthesis, so it's, by default, it's fully hierarchical. I, I have no point of comparison. Um, 
But now what is the consequence on uh, when you run full PNR? Uh, so what is interesting on the black parrot one, um, if you look at the negative slack, so the you have a bigger design, but the negative slack is quite far from the, from the objective. The default open road one is uh, the smallest. Uh, here we, get, we, we take exactly the same size, uh, 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 the same design, we just remove dead logic and, and we do constant uh, propagation. And it's very close in terms of uh, a negative stack. So I guess here we are also hitting, you know, some kind of chaos that are uh, always in EBA tools. You just change something and you get a different result. Um, but also, uh, what is interesting here is the uh, yeah the total power, which is the I guess it makes sense that it's lower lower than the uh, open road default one. Uh, but with the flat one, it's also quite higher. So in the end, it's a bigger design, but the back-end performance gets better because of this guidance that we get from the hierarchy. Okay, so uh, next steps. So there's still some low-hanging fruits in uh, optimization. Uh, first, obviously, it's inverter chains, because after our um, Propagation currently, we get a lot of uh, inverter chains. So we can implement a lot of uh, optimization ob objectives. So it can be gate merging, uh, LUT merging if it's FPGAs. Um, but also, what we will try, what I'd like to focus now is until now, it's basically, I would say, basic cleaning. So we would like to focus on logical depth optimization or also yeah, long pass optimization. And of course, other ideas uh, are welcome. Um, so there's a lot of tests to do. So uh, we would like to carry a full comparison using also full PNR on all those uh, designs. So this, this takes some time and a lot of uh, computing uh, power. And at some point, uh, we would like also to maybe integrate this back to ORFS. So it's, it's the difference will be the difference will be just there will be this uh, end variable to use uh, an edge edit. Okay, so I'm I'm switching now to let's say a different, just showing a, a bit of the tool how it's constructed. So you can use an edit also for completely different purpose. You can use it so it's a binary, of course. Uh, you you can use it as a sort of transformation tool between between formats, but you can also use it as a sort of entry point for Python editing. So um, you, this can be used for uh, data extraction from Netlist, so uh, uh, we are using it a lot, but also even editing. So if you want to modify a Netlist, uh, you can use this tool. You can reuse it for optimization, as I've uh, uh, described before. So currently, dead logic elimination or constant propagation. And you can also use it, so you input a netlist, you do some kind of Python browsing, uh, like you want to extract the information, then optimization, and then another Python after this optimization. So for instance, to generate those tables, this is what I'm using. So I, I, I can't. Uh, different characteristics in the netlist, then I do optimization and I recount exactly the same after. So just to give you an example, uh, so this is a, a minimal script you can use, you get access to, so, so be, the, the binary loads uh, everything in memory and then gives uh, the hand to the Python script, so you, you, you get access to the data in memory and then you can just I don't know, get the top design and, and, and run some Python function on it. So this is basically if, yeah, like a few lines just to browse all the, all, all the design, uh, print all the connectivity, all the, all the terminals, all the instances uh, recursively. So it's, it's kind of useful and currently I'm connecting this also to uh, Python pandas, for instance, to generate tables and, and data. So this can be extended to, to do lots of things. Lots of things. 
And that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Christoph. Uh, I, I have a quick question or comment or two. Yeah. Um, so often one of the reasons why you don't do cross-boundary optimization is, yeah, you want to be able to do LEC like at every stage. And yeah. my understanding is that the LEC, like logical equivalence checking tools, really struggle with things like cross-boundary optimization and then further optimizations that occur on top of that. Um, do you know how this sort of optimization late in the process affects LEC? Is it still a challenge for it or is it generally happy with it once you've done this? I think it would be happy with it because here we are not modifying the interfaces of the modules. Yeah. So, so we are limiting ourselves in the kind of cross-boundary optimization that we can do. Because usually there is a lot of optimizations that are available if you allow merging, uh, merging true boundaries. And currently, we are disabling this. Yeah. So the interface of the modules are kept exactly the same. Yeah. So I guess LEC would be easier there. I understand that LEC is, is complex mm -hmm. if you change the interface of the modules. Yeah. That makes sense. OK. And then the other question was, doing ECOs then, once you've done further optimization, is it, uh, you know, because sometimes it's actually very convenient. You might just want to invert the output of one module but in fact now it's kind of been merged across and it's more difficult to do. Uh, are you concerned about future, you know, ECO ability? Yeah, so uh, we have a plan to... Um, so it will be a sort of internal tool that we could also uh, expose to, to users. Mm. It's basically like, let's, let's say that you modify the module but we know why we mod modified it. So it's a sort of external conditions that led to the modification of this module, right? Yeah. So like if we do module per module, it needs basically the initial module and then the modified module plus those external conditions. Mm. And, and we can generate this to all, all already verify what we are doing. Yeah. If we take also the Python example, this is something that we can also sort of exposed for the users because it's exactly the same kind of problem. Yeah. Okay. So we, yeah, we are working on that kind of idea. But also here, keeping hierarchy helps a lot because otherwise you need to verify, uh, yeah, f do flat on the right and flat on the left to verify both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, mm -hmm. Christian, I think. So YOSIS stands for YOSIS Open Source Synthesis Suite. So when when will this be integrated into the suite, basically? When, when can I just do, oh, instead of flatten and then optimize, hierarchical optimize and set and forget? Yeah, so uh, there's, okay, I, I understand the reasons to do this. So first of all, what we are doing is not tied to Yosis. Mm -hmm. So it could, could be used, we are also using it, for instance, in FPGA flow. So if it, we integrate it, it will be, I would say, a very uh, lazy level integration because, uh, and also, um, we are doing this using, uh, in fact, there is a lot of stack of, uh, so Naja is not only this tool, it's, at first it was uh, data structures um, that are dedicated to that kind of transformation and we cannot use UOC's internal data structure to do the same. So I guess we need to be independent to be also not only pluggable to Yosis, but also we, we have to, yeah, there is a stack of uh, data structures behind it that we cannot integrate directly in Yosis. Yeah. Okay, so just to repeat the question, uh, how are these, you know, hierarchical optimizations compared to commercial or proprietary implementations? Yeah. So as I showed, we are not recovering. I mean, a first point of comparison is to compare to flat, right? So we are still not there. I think if we want to go there, it needs more 
integration, it, I mean, this kind of monolithic flow where you have synthesis, placement, routing, or at least synthesis and placement, it's not the case in the commercial tools. So what, what, what is called physical synthesis is something where you cannot make decisions, like mono, uh, very definitive decisions in synthesis that you cannot sort of uh, re change in placement or even in routing. So I cannot do any comparison here just with, with, with it. It's the whole stack that needs to be compared. And for the whole stack to be compared, there needs to be a change in this kind of linear flow to some kind of more, I would say, circular flow. So this tool is definitely, I think, very powerful with respect to optimization and other capabilities. So one question I wanted to ask was with respect to ECOs, like late in the design when like, you know, there is a complex RTL available and complex netlist available. And let's say when we are closer to the tape out and let's say we have to do some ECO and that ECO could be very tricky does your tool provide some capability on finding out nets which are deep into the logic and like you know that way like you know it can help designers who are trying to implement an ECO in the final gate level netlist? Yes, so browsing and looking for nets across uh, so yeah there is a lot of APIs available for this uh, definitely. So then I would need to understand exactly the kind of, I don't know, sketch of, uh, yeah. that you want to find, but provides those yeah, to browse through all the hierarchy, yeah. Oh, great. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Christophe, thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you.